poisonous black smoke pouring in from Jersey marshes. Everything wiped out. They're running toward the East River, thousands of them. Dropping in like rats. Their bodies burned and distorted beyond all possible recognition. At least 40 people, including six state troopers, lie dead. ...that those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. On the cold and dreadful Hallow's Eve of 1938, panic ran rampant in the streets of Grover's Mill, New Jersey, as people feared that Martians had invaded Earth. The Original War of the Worlds is a book written by H.G. Wells, one of the world's first science fiction authors. War of the Worlds was a story set in the late 1890s in England. This book is considered to be one of the most influential pieces of science fiction ever written. It was influential even to the young and brilliant Orson Welles, who decided to rewrite this story into a theater production that would take place in Grover's Mill, New Jersey instead. Orson Welles had formed the Mercury Theater the year before. The Mercury Theater performed the play as if it were a live radio news broadcast. On the day of Halloween, newspapers stacked on doorsteps with headlines like Radio Fake Scares Nation. These headlines were supported by quotes from telephone operators who described the conversations they had with frightened people. Some people said, "What were they, did I have a chance to see them? What were they like? What did they look like? One man told me that people were jumping out of the windows and they were going to kill their families before the Martians could get them. People jumped off of buildings, packed their belongings and families into their cars and fled to the mountains, drank poison so they wouldn't have to suffer death by the Martians, and even went into the streets to open fire into the night. If all this sounds a bit extreme, you are not alone. I asked the same question. How could a 23-year-old Orson Welles single-handedly and unintentionally spook an entire nation into believing that Martians had indeed invaded Earth? Most would say, welcome to the 1930s. Americans had just escaped the Great Depression with empty pockets. Europe was on the verge of a second world war, and the most destructive hurricane to strike the New England region had wiped out over 600 lives and 9,000 homes and buildings. According to the average American living in the late 1930s, anything was possible, even a Martian invasion. The story of the fake radio broadcast that scared an entire nation into believing in aliens has been passed down from generation to generation for 82 years as a true event. However, over recent years, with the dawn of a new digital era, has come skeptics of the assumed gullibility of an entire nation. People have investigated the story and found out that one of the biggest examples of fake news in history may be even bigger than assumed. Skeptics believe that there was no nationwide frenzy. The first topic of evidence being that only a few people actually tuned in to the broadcast that night. Wells's program was scheduled to air at the same time as ventriloquist Edgar Bergen's Chase and Sandburn Hour Show. It was one of the most popular national programs at the time. You won't tell me. I won't tell anybody. Uh, I don't even know what I dumped in it. Oh. <laughs> So more people would have been listening to Bergen's show rather than Wells' show. Also, on the night of the broadcast, the C.E. Hooper rating service called and surveyed 5,000 households, asking them what they were listening to. Only 2% said that they were listening to the War of the Worlds program. And of that 2%, skeptics claim that many would have thought it was a prank or a joke rather than taking it seriously. All this leads us to another question. Why would the newspapers over-exaggerate information to push a false story? I think the newspaper companies had a bone to pick with radio stations. As radio became a popular media source among American households in the 1930s, competition rose between the radio and newspaper industries. Making matters worse, radio had badly harmed the newspaper industry by stealing advertising revenue from print companies during the Great Depression. 
it would be legitimate to suggest that newspapers set out to take revenge on radio by forming a fake story that would depict the radio as an irresponsible and unreliable source of media. Nevertheless, many still believe that the broadcast did cause mass hysteria. Over the years, many people have come out with statements about what they experienced on that night, and many people claim that they were actually convinced that it was a real news broadcast, even if only for a minute. Orson Welles was a creative genius. If anyone could convince people of a Martian invasion, it was him. Did Orson Welles panic a nation with the radio broadcast of War of the Worlds? Or is it just a myth that was sculpted and presented by newspapers as a scheme to discredit radio? I don't think I will ever be sure, but I am sure about the effects of this historic event. Results of the War of the Worlds broadcast event include Section 73.1217 of the Federal Communication Commission's rules, which prohibits the broadcasting of false information concerning a catastrophe. Orson Welles' program also served as an inspiration for the 1975 Emmy Award-winning movie titled The Night That Panicked America, directed by Joseph Sargent and Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds, starring Tom Cruise. And most importantly, this event allowed Americans to realize the power of the media. So goodbye, everybody. And remember, please, for the next day or so, the terrible lesson you learned tonight. That grinning, glowing, globular invader of your living room is an inhabitant of the pumpkin patch. And if your doorbell rings and nobody's there, that was no Martian. It's Halloween.